Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. He's our great God. The same God yesterday. The same God today. The same God forever. And one day he will reveal himself. The Bible says, and the clouds shall be rolled back. Like a scroll, we will see the Lord of glory appearing and demonstrating his glory. Ah, when he showed his glory to Moses, he said, I will cause my goodness to go before me. And then I will hide you in a rock and I will cover you with my hand. And then I will reveal my glory. He's a God, a revealer, a God who shows his mercy to his children. He loves you so much. Have you ever realized how much God loves you? Have you ever realized how much God loves you? Uh, the Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Have you ever thought about that? I could not escape this universe and be far from the love of God. Yes. I couldn't change my address and God's love would miss me and not find me. He is faithful. He is faithful. Praise God. Uh, we're so privileged to be able to stand together in the presence of God. Um, let's just stand on our feet in honor of our king this morning as we pray father in the name of Jesus we reverence you we honor you we give you the honor that you deserve and as we pray this morning we invite you to fill our hearts Fill our lives, fill our days with more of you. Increase in us so that you may be glorified in the world. Let the world see Jesus because you live in Jesus' name. Amen. I am so excited that we can study this world this word together. Uh, Moses, uh, an incredible man. Every time I reflect on Moses, so many things excite me about his persona, his character, his experience with God, uh, because God did something that the rest uh, of his generation would write down and keep as words through Moses' willingness to encounter the presence of God. I don't know if you understand that. The presence of God was a terrifying presence. The people who didn't go in were scared for Moses. But Moses was willing to stand in the presence of God and God opened Moses' understanding to who he is. Uh, I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you know him? Uh, if you believe you know him, can you answer who is he? Who is he? God. Moses encountered him in a bush. The creator of the universe revealed himself in a burning bush. Uh, it's so ironic how God uh, demonstrates himself in uncommon places. When Jesus was born, uh, there were a lot of fancy places that were worthy of a king. Uh, there were a lot of nice places. Maybe they were four-star hotels that were at least better uh, than lying down in a feeding trough of the animals in the, in the manger. But God chose to be born in an obscure place 
because it's not the glory of this world that will elevate who he is. He is already exalted. And so when he reveals himself, even in that lowly place, you will see that his glory far exceeds everything around him. Moses uh, got to know God because of an encounter. Uh, Moses, I don't know if you've ever realized, was a lost soul. He's a lost soul. He was a generation in diaspora. A uh, generation uh, not only born at a time where there was mass infanticide. Infanticide, they were killing babies. The Pharaoh had ordered that all male bo firstborns uh, of the land of Goshen should be killed because there was a rumor that a king was going to be born, a deliverer. And so they were killing boys. Every boy that was born, they would check if there was an older boy and they would kill the eldest. They would kill the babies. Any boy that had the look of a deliverer that looked like someone who would rise up, they'd kill him too. And Moses escaped that death sentence. And Moses ended up being raised by the daughter of the very Pharaoh that wanted to kill Moses. The irony of God's purpose is that the very things that intend to harm you, the very things that are supposed to be an obstacle to you, the very things that are supposed to be a hindrance to your progress are the very things that God will use to accelerate you and differentiate you. And here was Moses thrust into the palace with no lineage to guide him there, raised as though he was one of the nobles and royals, even though he had no heritage among those people. And uh, Moses uh, would continuously be reminded by those who took care of him that he was a Hebrew. Moses never lost his identity, his understanding of his connectedness to those who were dejected and those who were forsaken. Uh, Moses continued with this understanding until he grew up and he was of age. And the word of God tells us uh, that Moses uh, he, he struggled with this identity knowing that he had a place in the palace he continued to look for his people who were the laborers and the slaves in the same place and, and uh, that dialogue continued to play a contentious game in Moses mind uh, he saw them as his brothers but they didn't recognize his placement among them because to them he represented Egypt to them he represented oppression to them he represented hatred but Moses was looking for belonging he was looking for brotherhood he wanted to be connected to uh, who he was uh, a lost soul confused because the experience that he lived in was not what he deserved. Uh, and the experience he saw was not what his people deserved. But he did not understand a path. He did not see a way to reconcile either. He was continuously puzzled and challenged with this reality uh, that he experienced. Uh, Moses, uh, because of this constant tussle in his soul, uh, would eventually um, do something that would make a fugitive out of him. A fugitive. Moses, in defense of a Hebrew, kills an Egyptian something absolutely forbidden by Egyptian law is that a foreigner should kill an Egyptian. As soon as that happened, Moses' identity became widely known and Moses had no safety 
in the land. His safety was taken away. He couldn't hide it among his own people and he definitely couldn't hide in the safety of Egypt. Moses, a Hebrew born slave, living in an island of freedom among his oppressors, knowing his kindred were suffering. Moses, eager to save his people from oppression, focused his strength focused on his strength, but he dug a hole that no one could dig him out of. In the book of Exodus, in the second chapter, the Bible captures this attempt to reconcile his experience to bridge the gap between the divide in his mind and the experience in his life. Verse 11, now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he was out of, that he went, he went out to his brethren and he looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. He looked around and he saw no one. And he killed the Egyptian with his hand and he hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, two Hebrew men were fighting this time. And he, he said, why are you uh, striking your companion? Why? And they looked at him and said, Who made you prince and judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Moses had compassion for his people. He saw the hard labor, the beatings, the slavery. Took matters into his own hand. You know, when you read this closely, it seems like the Hebrews actually knew who he was. See, when they say, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? They wouldn't be talking to an Egyptian like that. They wouldn't refer to the Egyptian in the third person as the Egyptian. They would say, are, are you going to kill me like the other person? But they knew Moses was not one of them. But they also didn't accept him as one of their own. They knew him in a way, but they really didn't know him. See, when you read, and it says, who made you prince? Who made you judge over us? It makes it clear they actually don't have a clue who Moses is. That question, that very question, would linger in Moses. Compassion for his people. A life dedicated to his mission. That's what we're seeing. He leaves the palace to hang out with slaves. He goes back home and sleeps in the palace. Comes back the next morning and sits with the bricklayers. While the Egyptians are beating his people, he's sitting there uh, empathizing in misery, knowing that this is not what he wants to see. And this is, there's got to be a reason why. Uh, what can I do to make a difference? What, what is in my power? And, and he, he struggles. 
He keeps coming back as gruesome, as grotesque as what he saw and what he took in. He keeps coming back. Something on the inside of him keeps drawing him back. Moses was above the oppression, but he didn't choose it. We also see that Moses had courage to stand against tyranny. When he saw an Egyptian beating his Hebrew, he took matters in his own hand and said, not on my watch. And he dealt with the Egyptian, even though there was a serious risk for his own life. He had courage. They said ruler and they said judge. All of these things, compassion, dedication to his mission, leaving everything behind, being above oppression, courage to stand against tyranny, being a ruler and a judge, all these realms of possibilities were inside Moses. All these realms of possibilities were inside Moses. But he was trapped in a place where he could not bring them out. Uh, he saw problems he couldn't solve. He saw the limitations of what he was in, but he didn't know how to bring deliverance to his people. Moses felt stranded in a glass box where he could see the problem, but he had no way to reach out and change it. What was missing in Moses' life to activate one of these realms of possibilities? Could he at least rise up and be a ruler? What if Moses could pop out of this frozen place and become a judge? Oh, could he lead these people? Could his compassion bring about change? Uh, could he disrupt the Egyptian system and bring peace and harmony? What was missing? How would Moses take this motivation on the inside of him? The, the, the transformation that needed to happen to bring these realms of possibilities from potential into an experience that somebody would benefit from. What could he do? What was missing? What catalyst would launch him up? What catalyst would bring him to what he was destined to do? See, we have the benefit of knowing the end of the story. But Moses was at the tip of what has already happened and he didn't know what was ahead. There was no prophet to tell Moses who he was. There was no man of God to speak the word over him. There was no anointing. There were no scriptures written for him to read. Uh, there was no word that was already spoken that he could draw from and begin to expect God to move. In fact, at this point, Moses had no knowledge of this God. He was just stranded in a place where he knew there had to be change. We know the story. Moses, he escaped Egypt. You know, fast forward a little bit and Moses saw a bush. And in that bush he saw a fire. You know, when you look at forest fires you know uh, sad to say that 2021 has been a year where we had so many of them and uh so much that we can at least say we understand fires um you don't see a fire in one bush when it's burning in the wild uh, if a fire starts in one place you'll see it's taken over the hill but moses looked and there was a bush and there was a fire and the fire was in the bush, but the bush was not actually on fire. 
the bush was not consumed. The fire would not spread. Uh, there was no race to run away from the fire, which is what we do when we have a hillside on fire. Instead, the fire stayed in the bush, and Moses was intrigued by this mystery. And he said, let me stop and look at this thing. I've been educated in the Egyptian education system. We know how to build massive pyramids. We know how to smelt ore into gold. But I have seen fire and I have never seen a fire that would occupy a consumable thing. And yet the consumable thing would not be consumed. And he turned aside to look. He stayed there until uh, he heard something. How can a bush be on fire? Not be burned up. Nothing else is burning. Just fire in one place. I want you to know that God will present mysteries to you, knowing who you are. Mysteries that will boggle your mind. Things that you can't leave alone. I want you to know that that's God calling you. When there's a mystery, you're absolutely captivated by why, how? I can't understand. Don't walk away from your burning bush. Are you with me this morning? Many people have missed their encounters because they've walked away from their mystery. Don't walk away from your burning bush. When you see a mystery and it continues to hang in your mind, that's God calling. Answer him. Hallelujah. I love it. We're in a generation where we have these weird things in our pockets. Um, we used to call them phones. Yeah, we used to call them phones, but nobody ever puts it to their ear anymore. You know how strange it is, a phone that people never pick up. Uh, you know, we, we, we power it on and we, we, we tap all over the screen. We swipe and, you know, shake and, you know, do all sorts of things with these devices. But the very last thing you'll see is somebody take this thing from their pocket and stick it on their ear. That's not the way it's used. In fact, it's such a mystery because you'll often see it'll be ringing, singing a song. Dun, 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 dun. And folks will just look at it as though, Wow. Because we don't know what to do when the phone rings. When you're stuck with a mystery you don't understand, turn aside and investigate because God is calling you. God is calling you. Don't walk away from your burning bush. Moses. 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 Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. And Moses said, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I'm right here. I hear the voice. I know the name. At least I know the name. That's my name. I'm in a mystery where there's a bush. There's a fire in it. The bush is not burning. Nothing else is burning. But my name is being called. I know that name. It's me. Here I am. I'm here. Yes. Moses, here I am. In verse 6, 
that voice introduces himself to Moses. He says, I am the God of your father, of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. I am the God of your fathers, Abraham. I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of Isaac. When you turn aside to answer his call, he would definitely reveal who he is to you. The word I am in Hebrew, Haya. Haya. Revealing himself, his identity in his first experience with Moses. He continues when he shows you who he is. Then he'll continue and show you what he has. Verse 7, he says, I have. Ra'a. Ra'a. I have. I have seen. I don't know if you even know who he is yet. But he says, I have seen. Do you know that he's the God who sees? The God who sees. Jehovah El Roy. Ra'a. I have seen. I have seen the oppression. See, at this point, God is dealing with the fingerprint on the inside of Moses. See, Moses has been boggled by the oppression. Boggled by the trouble. Boggled by the pain that the people of God are bearing and Moses felt powerless. He felt trapped. He felt disconnected from the experience knowing that there's a reason why he's on the outside looking in but he didn't know what to do to break them out. And God burns a bush without burning the bush. He puts his fire in the middle of it. And Moses comes to look at the mystery. And as he draws close, he hears Moses. Moses, he said, here I am. God introduces himself to Moses. He said, I am. What an introduction. What do you need him to be? What are you going through? I am. I'm the God of your fathers. I'm the God of Abraham. I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of Isaac. And I am the God of Moses. I want you to put your name in there. He is my God. I am. He said, I am your God. I am your leader. I am your deliverer. I am your way maker. I am your healer. I am your provider. I am your strength. I am your refuge. I am. Haya. Haya. That's who he is. He said, I have. Ra'ah. I have seen the oppression of my people. At this point, Moses, all the hair on his neck is standing up. He said, whoa, whatever is going on here, he knows my heart. That is exactly what drove Moses to the Egyptian, to killing, to becoming a fugitive, to standing in the place of watching what the people were going through in the first place. 
and what drove him out of Egypt and drove him to this hillside and drove him to the fire was this very first I have that God talks to Moses in said I have seen God is a God of compassion God is a God of mercy God is a God who is not untouched with the feelings of our infirmity he says I have seen what you're going through I have seen your hurt I see your burdens I see your struggles I see I have Ra'ah. Ra'ah. what you're going through this morning God says I have I have seen I know I carry inside of me I hear your cry I know their sorrows. I know their hurt. I know their heartache. And then he tells Moses, I have come. I have come. I want you to know God is here. He says, I have come. Do you know what he's come to do? He says, I have come to deliver. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. Hmm. That ought to wake somebody up this morning. Whatever you are going through, he says, I have seen. And he said, I have come to deliver. To bring you out. To lead you through a pasture. To bring you to a place of safety. Verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them. Out of the hands of the Egyptians. And to bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey. God begins to talk to Moses and God begins to square Moses up to understand why God is having this conversation with Moses. You see, because God, I'm glad you're going to deliver them. Uh, I'm glad there's going to be finally salvation for them. But what does that have to do with me? I'm a fugitive. I'm a wanted man in Egypt. Uh, who am I to you? God introduces himself, the I am, to Moses. And Moses says, so who am I? I? Verse 11. Who am I? Who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. And that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Who am I? That question really says, how can I? I was already there. I watched in misery, seeing the people suffer each day being whipped. Their burdens being doubled. Their workload without break. No payment for their work. They were just suffering as slaves. Who am I? What can I do? How can I be the one to make a change? Oh God, what is it that I have that will make a difference in their experience? How will I do what you say I can do? How? See, Moses, before this bush lived in his limitations, he saw the suffering, he couldn't fix it. The little chance he had, he did what he could. He took one Egyptian, one Moses took one Egyptian and killed him and that cost Moses his whole opportunity to be able to do anything. He had nothing left to do. But Moses has not yet understood the encounter he just had. He just met a man. 
or let me say he just met God in a fire, in a bush, in the wilderness, who knew his name and he knew his hurt and he knew his people and he sent him on a mission and Moses was still trapped in thinking about his limitations. You see, because Moses was yet to understand who this person is, Moses said, what will I tell them? I mean, they know who I am. There's a warrant for my arrest. What will I say? I have no power. He's a king. I'm a wanted man. And God says to Moses, verse 14, he says, I am who I am. I am. The I am. I am, I am, in Hebrew means to become. When you get to know the I am, he becomes the solution to what you need. As long as you don't know him, you will only see the need and you will only see the obstacles and the problems. But the moment you get to know the I am, he becomes the answer. It doesn't matter what you're going through, wanted man or not, the I am is the answer. Everything you need, every realm of possibilities that exist in you can only be unlocked through the I am. You become who he's created you to be when you know I am to become. He becomes those possibilities through you and you begin to fulfill your purpose because he's in you. Haya, it means to exist. That means God exists. He exists to reveal himself. He will always reveal himself through a willing vessel. Anybody who has opened the storehouse of their heart to receive God, God will enter by invitation. But God is not an armed bandit. He's not doing hostile takeovers. If you don't want to experience him, he will not impose. I don't know if you understand me. To exist. He exists to reveal himself to you. To reveal himself. Will you turn aside to investigate your burning bush? When he shows you a mystery Will you draw close to inquire and see what is this all about? Haya means to occur. In God, impossible things happen because he is unlimitable. It may seem impossible, yes, but that's until you experience the I am. He makes it occur. It happens in him. Infinite possibilities, they happen in him if you know him. The I am means to be done. To accomplish To finish. He is the accomplisher. He's the finisher. The Bible says he is able 
to accomplish all things that concern you. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to challenge you this morning. When Moses said, who do I say gave me this authority? What name do I come in? He said, tell them. I am. I want you to stand up in life again. No matter what you've gone through. No matter where you find yourself. And when people look at you, when your situation looks at you and says, what's the difference? You failed the last time you tried. Say, I am is with me. He's in me. And his power enables me to become. The I am exists in me to reveal. The I am causes my realities to occur. And the I am causes my possibilities to be done. I have this great confidence in him, the one who exists from everlasting to everlasting. That as long as he's spoken his word, heaven and earth may pass away, but the I am that I am will never lie. His word cannot return to him. No matter what you're going through, what he says about you is the only truth. Everything else can change, but his word will never change. I want you to begin to hear God's word louder than the experiences you're having. You are chosen. You are loved. You are victorious because he has said it. And his word is true. In the name of Jesus. Somebody this morning says, I don't know him. Neither did Moses. But he had a moment. And after that moment, they had introduced themselves to each other. Who am I? And who are you? All those questions were answered because there was a bush with a fire inside. The bush was not burning and neither was the hillside. But God's fire began to burn on the inside of Moses because of that bush. Today, let the fire of God begin to burn inside your heart. You don't know him, but after this experience, after this moment, you can know him and he wants you to know who he is. We'll pray this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you love me, that you have chosen me to be a part of you. Even though I didn't know you, you knew me before you formed me. You have a purpose for me. And I choose to know you this morning by believing in the gift called Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus came to the world. I believe that Jesus gave up his life through death on a cross. I believe that that death on the cross has opened the door for me to be a part of God's family. And I enter into that relationship today through faith. Lord, I receive you in my heart. Fill my life, O oh God, and make me new. In Jesus' name we pray.
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. In the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to join us. We meet, we meet midweek on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific time or for Bible study. You can get the details, purifiedmission.church slash events and uh, join us as we celebrate our great God. Uh, have a wonderful week. If you receive the Lord through our time together this morning, please let us know. We want to pray for you. And if possible, we'd love to send you a gift, something that will encourage you and build you up in God. Uh, please let us know, and the Lord will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, everybody.